Welcome to Virgo season. Virgo is here at 1056 a.m. Eastern time. The sun is exiting Leo and entering Virgo, and all of us are going to be affected by this. And it gets extra exciting because we actually have an eclipse portal showing up and it will be taking place while the sun is in Virgo in this next couple of weeks. And the sun entering Virgo at this time is going to kind of start the process of all of our preparation for this moment of this upcoming eclipse. And I want to talk about it. Let's go ahead and share the chart. Okay, this is the lunar eclipse coming up on September 17th at 10.34 p.m. in Washington, D.C. So depending on your time zone, um, you know, it just depends. But this is the moment of exactness with the sun in Virgo and the moon in Pisces, which is pretty exciting. And the matching solar eclipse is going to be taking place once again on the Libra and Aries axis. But you can see how as this, do you see this horseshoe right here and that matching horseshoe right there? That's the nodal path. That measures um, these different mathematical points relating to the moon. And as the moon is, you know, doing its thing and the nodes are doing their thing, the nodes are getting closer and closer and closer to zero, zero degrees of Aries. And then they will be entering, oh, sorry, it's going to be this way. And then they will be entering the Virgo Pisces axis. This is not happening super duper soon, but uh I'll find out when it happens. We've got we've got a bunch of months to go, but but this is the first time I think in a while that we're we've felt that Virgo Pisces axis triggering with eclipse energy and this can be very powerful for everybody. And especially those of us with a lot of Virgo and a lot of Pisces. So very, very exciting. Let's take a look at the sun entering Virgo in 2024. This is the chart of that moment. And you can see um, that the sun in this moment is creating a loose-ish trine with Chiron. And so one thing to keep an eye on with this is that Chiron deals with our deepest soul wounds and the stuff that really triggers us. So as the sun, oh, 1055, we got to move forward one minute. Do you, did you see that? Look at this zero, zero. If we go to 1055, which is what this one website I found showed me, and I thought, that's not right. It's 1056. Look at that. The sun moving into zero, zero degrees. Um, the sun moves about one degree every single day. So when you go, you know, minute by minute, it's, um, you know, it doesn't take a ton of minutes for it to move a full degree. So that took us to 1123 AM and we need to go back to 1056. That's like 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes, it's moving one minute, one astrological minute, um, but if you're feeling some flow between your inner wounding and your sense of self, that is what is happening today with that. But one thing that I think we do also need to keep an eye on is these green lines here, creating a yod between Pluto at zero, zero degrees of Aquarius, the sun at zero, 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 zero degrees of Virgo, and Neptune at 29 degrees and 17 minutes of Pisces. Okay, so it's not a zero zero, but it's as close as it basically can be. And Neptune's a pretty slow moving planet. And when you have this kind of configuration of angles, what it indicates is this situation where the three energies can seem impossible to have all at the same time. Um, you, in this exact instance, what you really want to do is feel like your core self, get your priorities straight, um, probably get logical about things. You want to take control of your physical health. Virgo is really into that. It wants to take the supplements. It wants to exercise. It wants to read about supplements and exercise, even if it doesn't actually take the supplements and exercise. It's interested in health, even if it doesn't take action on that very well. Um and so this energy today is going to say, I, I want to get healthy. I want to take action and like move forward and do these different things. I want to take my supplements. I want to afford the supplements. 
And then at the same time, this Pluto, this huge, I mean, when I think of this exact vibe, I feel like I just see this huge planet in space and you, you look at it and the perspective is just so vast and it makes this sound that is so low, this huge low vibration that's just going to shake everything up in its path and call it to heal, call it to be shaken up just the way it needs to be to prune off what isn't working so that new growth can arise and do it in a really authentic way, in a way that makes it so you have to be true to yourself or it's not going to work. And there's going to be a little bit of a disconnect today between you and your health goals in particular, both mental and physical health, and your general priorities and your schedule, and the way that you are being called to to give things up and and step into a new iteration of yourself that's more authentic. There may be a, a sense of how can I be more authentic to myself and prioritize myself the way I need to prioritize these different things I have going on in my life. When you feel that disconnect, it's this yod being activated by the sun being right here today. The other end of it is that Neptune at 29 degrees and 17 minutes of Pisces retrograde. And Neptune is going to be inviting you to um, rethink your past intuitions and these... I mean, this aspect is called an in conjunct, but you're, you're being invited to look at your own in conjunctions internally between your spiritual feelings of what you feel like the spirit is telling you to do versus your logic brain. And this is a time where we get to a little bit renegotiate the balance of what's going on. And we kind of have to look look retrospectively and say, okay, how did I get myself where I am today? Where did I think I was following my intuition? And maybe I wasn't. Maybe uh, where did I not think I was following my intuition? And maybe I was. Just the other day, I had this funny experience where um, I was out with a friend and we were we went out to dinner and we we thought we should go out to here. We should go out to there. And then we just like picked the same place that we always go. And then we decided, okay, well, we're going to go on a walk. We're going to get this kind of dessert. We're going to go to this kind of art show. We're going to go do this thing. And then she wasn't feeling very well. And so we decided to turn back. And then she said, why don't we sit here on the side of the road? And we literally sat down like next to a highway, like not a highway, but like center street and main street. We're like sitting on the grass there uh, by this busy road. And, um, you know who you are. Uh, somebody was driving around and saw us there. And he said, oh my gosh, is that Ali Duzette? And he drove around again and decided to go park his car and find me. And we had a fabulous time. And the whole time uh, leading up to that magical moment, um, you know, we hadn't thought we were following the spirit. You know, we were just kind of like, yeah, we shouldn't go there. We should go there. Well, I don't feel good. Let's just turn back. Well, what if we sit here? And it didn't feel like this big spiritual guidance but it was, and it led to this incredible meeting where we were able to do exactly what needed to be done for all three of our next steps on our life journeys. You know, we had just a fabulous conversation that I think was really life-changing and positive. And how many times do we have these situations where we don't even think that we're being led by the spirit, but like we actually are. And this vibe is inviting us to look back at our lives and say, actually, maybe the times that I thought I was messing up and I thought I was just being a weirdo sitting on the side of the road, it was actually, you know, the cosmic hand, you know, guiding me exactly where I needed to be. Now, as we're feeling a disconnect between the spiritual side, the logical side, and the call to be authentic and to really step into who we really are and to live with that integrity, if you feel caught up in that today, the answer is to look at zero, zero degrees of Pisces. And in this exact chart of this moment, oh man, it's just barely on the cusp of the fifth house. So my big recommendation for all of us as we step into this Virgo season is to really lean into uh, 
that Pisces energy, really lean into your connection with the divine. Don't be afraid to ask God questions and listen for the answers and write them down on paper and then look at them with that Virgo logical eye and say, okay, would it make sense for God to tell me this? And feel it in your body. Pisces is a water sign. So if you're feeling stuck, it might be helpful really and truly to just take a bath, to wash your hands mindfully under running water. Like if you cannot actually go chill in your bathtub for a while, you can't make it to the rec center and hang out in the hot tub for an hour or whatever. If you cannot do that, if you don't have time for a full shower to just let water run over you, just wash your hands for like the full two minutes, wash your hands for five minutes, like just being in contact with running water or just soaking in water is going to be really supportive today, especially, and you may be shocked at the great ideas and insights and revelation that come to you through the power of your body's connection with water. Uh, in the fifth house, I'm going to say that today, again, if you're feeling stuck and like you don't know how to move forward in a way that's authentic to you and that honors your logical side and your true priorities and that honors your spiritual side and your promptings, the fifth house deals with the legacy of self. That is what I would call it. But this is where you use who you are to create new things. I mean, like this is the house that governs like the act of sex, but it is also the house that governs um, creative impulses of all kinds, because it's really about taking who you are and taking a piece of that and using it to create something that has never existed before. So what does that mean? It means if you have like a knitting project, go knit. Like if you want to go sew something, go sew. If you want to go um, write on a book, play the piano, like enjoy a creative pursuit. If you feel like you're not a very creative person, um, you could try. You could go and get some watercolors from Walmart for $2 and then paint on a plain piece of paper with a YouTube video that teaches you about watercolor. That's what we're doing in my family um, right now for our family time. Um, there are lots of things that you could try and Maybe you should. Maybe you should just um, take your paper and pen and pull up YouTube and, and learn how to sketch a flower, you know? Um, try something creative. Uh, spend time with your creations, maybe your children. Um, maybe if you have created things in the past that you haven't appreciated lately, like go snuggle up in the quilt that you made and go uh, listen to the song that you wrote and go look at the art that you drew and remind yourself of how creative and wonderful you are and how sometimes your impulses lead you to make beautiful and wonderful things that make the world a better place. Uh, that is my big challenge to you today. And it's not really a challenge. It's really just an invitation. I invite you to go and remember that you are a creative genius and that you are being led by our creator. Even when you don't feel like you are, a lot of things are lining up in your life and have already lined up in your life that indicate that things are lined up for you. And it can be safe to trust that things are lined up for you, that the schedule is happening right on time. Okay, that's what I've got for you today. Remember to write in your pages. We are almost done with this challenge, by the way. I believe it is August 22nd. This challenge ends on August 24th, which is two days away, Saturday. And I will be doing a live session for everybody that is doing the paid version of that challenge. And the link to sign up for that is below. And if you haven't done it until this point, that's fine. You can go and watch the pre-recorded session. And it was really good. We worked on the spleen and the... Uh, thyroid. And we, we worked on a bunch of physical body stuff that came up as part of this taking out the trash challenge, which was really exciting. And I have no idea what we're going to see on Saturday morning, but I'm excited for that too. So go check it out. If you want to um, have some fun with me live, I would love to see you there. Um, and yeah, get writing. We have a lot to do, but we're actually doing it. And you are making a ton of progress, even if you don't think that you are you actually are. And if you have missed some days, that's okay. I missed some days too. And guess what? Here we are rocking our lives and making it forward even so. So be proud of yourself and choose to be happy if you can. 
put a smile on even if you don't feel like it and take some deep breaths with your smile on and see how it changes how you feel. Okay, you are going to have a good day. I decided it. I don't, I, I hope you do. Have a good day, please. And we'll see you later.